Hello everyone and welcome to Kenshi. It's come out of development recently, I've been watching it for a few years, playing it. Spent a long time on it actually, but we're going to be playing some on the channel. This is going to be an edited let's play because Kenshi, it is a slow game. But it, it's, you know, it's, it's got some grind, but it's enjoyable grind in my opinion. Kenshi. It's a brutal world. It's open world, squad based RPG. You start off as a nobody. The game does not care about you. The factions will fight each other. Bandits will rob people no matter what. Unless you are there to stop them. Or you could join in on the fun. It's all up to you really. Kenshi offers a lot of depth. There's base building, Adventuring, stealing, you can just be a simple trader, bounty hunting. And we're going to be taking a look at some of that in this let's play. We're going to be starting a new game. We're going to be playing the Wanderer start over here. You're just a lone wanderer with nothing but a few coins, a pair of pants and a rusty sword. Ready to venture out into the world. This is the way the game is intended to be played. There's a bunch of advanced options here, you can set a bunch of different things. Hunger, chance of death, global damage multiplier, building speeds, you can turn on or off whether bandits loot you, easy prospecting, which helps with base building, number of wild animal nests. We're going to be venturing into the post-apocalyptic world of Kenshi. Too many corpses left lying around will attract predators, that is good to know. I will see you all in a moment, as it takes a while to load up. Alright, here we are. Welcome to the Kenshi Character Generator. As you can see, there are a lot of options. So you can look exactly like the person... Well, the way you'd like them to build. You can select things from their idle stands, whether they whimper, hold their stomach, stand at attention, squat, you know, casual lean. I like to go for the uh, the arms cross pose. You can set a skin tone. You can set the height of your person, their frame, posture, shoulder set, bulk of arms, bulk of the torso, shape of your legs, bulk, feet. There's a lot here. You will start out looking a bit wimpy. That's because you start out as a nobody. Over the course of the game. Training your, your characters can either increase or decrease their bulk, depending on the skill you train them in. There's also races. We can be a human, which have... It's the only race that has a sub-race. We have the Greenlander. He's going to be your jack of all trades. Doesn't have any minuses and a couple of bonuses to farming, cooking, science. You know, not bad. Not bad at all. You can mostly still do everything, no matter your race in game, but certain races will be better, you know, people will be better suited to some things. You'll also have your hit points ratio over here that's also based on your race. For example, if we take a look at the skeletons over here, men of iron, they're a complete mystery. They have 200 hit points, they're very good at heavy weapons and robotics, but they're not very good at dodging, for example. We've got the Shek. They are your classic warrior race. They've got 125 hit points, good at toughness, attack and strength, not good at dexterity, athletics, farming, science, laboring, that sort of thing. We've got the Hive. They also have a few sub-races, actually. They are pretty interesting. Due to their weird body shape, they can't wear certain kits of armor. They can't really wear boots, for example, because they have stilts for legs. But 80 hit points for the Hive Prince over here. It's good at a lot of things. We've got the Hive Worker Drone. It's got a lot more hit points, more gear towards farming, etc. Hive Soldier Drone. It's like a hammerhead shark. 200 hit points as well. And then finally, the Scorchlander, which is the other kind of human. 
They're more better at armor smithing, dodging, stealth, sneaking around, athletics, dexterity. But for our first character, which is going to be named after me, we're just going to go with a Greenlander. I've already gone through the uh, rigmarole of customizing him. You can select his face. You can get a preset up here, and then you can customize all the slides over there. I don't particularly care about the face, but if you do, Kenji has you covered. You can change hair as well, beard color, everything. We're gonna hit confirm over here, and where? There we go. We are in the border zone. Welcome to the world of Kenji. Basic controls: WASD to move the mouse, rotate middle mouse button, zoom to use the scroll wheel. There we go. This is where you can find your people in your squad. You can have multiple squads on the map at one go. That's me. You can see my health points over here for all my body parts. You can see my stats over here. It's going to be a bigger screen here. We'll go through them as we encounter them. And yeah. Give a move order to your character. Right click on the terrain. There we go. We can unpause by hitting spacebar. Double click on your character icon. There we go. Focus our view on him. Hold the right mouse button to get more available actions. We'll have to, for example, if we then hover over him, we can talk to the twitchy bar thug, follow him around, bodyguard him, or attack him. There we go. GUI overview. I can dismiss that one, that's fine. What do I do? There's no linear story or mission to follow. You can be a trader, thief, bounty hunter, farmer, even a warlord. As we've all gone over before. Hit the M key. Sure, that's great. What do we do in towns? You've discovered your first town. They're perfect for stocking up on supplies and selling loot. Oh, why are you frozen? Weird game. Cash in on your loot. You'll need to find a store. Hold alt. You can see stuff on the ground. There's a lot of abandoned stuff. There's a lot of junk. This town has seen better days, obviously. But there is actually a bar here. We'll be going there momentarily. Matter of fact, why not go there right away? Take a look around, customer. I think I will. Show me what you've got. This will open up the, uh, the trader inventory. He's got some weapons here. He's got a crossbow as well. Most of the weapons you're going to be encountering are going to be melee weapons of a varying sort. We've got pole arms, we've got katanas, we've got uh, heavy weapons and stuff, we've got crossbows here, which basically the only ranged weapon you will re reasonably find outside of a town. There's some food items here as well. We will need food to survive. We do have a hunger bar. You can die from hunger. You can lose limbs in this game. It's pretty insane. There's a lot of stuff here. I don't think we're going to be touching any of that for now. You can also find out through about bounties like this by checking out these books. For example, this is about the Bugmaster. One of banditry, raiding, mass murder, cannibalism and genocide. Oh yeah. There's cannibalism in this game. You can get captured by cannibals. You can get eaten. You can get a dog. And it can get eaten. Anyway. We've got ourselves a compatriot over here. If we click on him to see his stats. His name's Hobbs. He's a drifter. His state is normal. His goal is to relax. And he asked us to have a drink with him. Yes, that's it. Have a drink on me. Say, have you ever heard the story of the Wailing Phantom? Can't say that I have. What's it about? Well, legend has it that it nests deep, deep into the forest. They say it preys on lost travelers, feeds on their souls, and makes rotting loincloths out of their neck skins. Apparently, survivors have told that it has pungent potato odor and has eyes that resemble surprised truffles. There was one particularly handsome man warrior that once very nearly slayed the beast. But he choked on a boiled potato two and a half weeks ago. Seriously? That sounds amazing. How do I find it? 
If I knew that, I would have tracked it down myself. But if you're going to head out in search of it, you must take me with you. Call it an old man's last... an old dying man's last wish. He doesn't... he doesn't look very ill. What's wrong with you? Aren't we all slowly dying in this relentless, dark world? Yes. This dying man's wish... And this dying man wishes to witness the diabolical monster with his t own two eyes. They say that if you lick one of its pinky toes, then you'll gain the power of sweet, balmy immortality. Oh, and that true love's smooch will transform the beast into a glorious man cherub whom will grant you all of your deepest munchies. You know what? Wise words. Join with me. Let's find it together. And, well, we walked into a bar and we made a friend. You see, it's Hobbs. Let's have a look at his stats and we'll compare them. So he's got a bit of attributes. Things like strength will affect your physical bulk. Dexterity affects visible muscle definition. It's not bad. He's not good. But at the same time, he's got a bit of experience all around. And, you know, he's free. He wanted to join us of his own volition, so that's going to be very valuable to us in the long run. He's got a bit of weapon skill. These weapon skills basically affect how much damage you deal. And the only way to train them is to attack with that specific kind of weapon. So he's actually best with heavy weapons and pole arms. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to find one of those real quick, except for like buying one, which is very expensive. But you know, we can always give him a katana or a saber. He's also got a bit of melee attack on him. Which, you know, attack makes it easier to hit people. Means you'll attack more. Chance of attack not getting blocked, so it's harder for them to block because you're better at attacking. Way to train that, you know, fighting. Using special equipment. Fighting people who are stronger than you because you'll learn a lot more. You'll get penalized if you fight people that are a lot weaker than you. So you can't just keep beating up on someone forever and become a god that way. And his melee defense, he's got a bit of that. Not really good at dodging. Now, for comparison. This is me. I am crap. At everything. It's, uh, <laughs> not looking very good. I am not strong. I can carry 16 kilos without being overweight. I'm not good at anything. Not yet, anyway. But we're going to change that. We're gonna tell Hobbs to follow me. I'm going to select both of them. And I'm going to hit this little button over here. That means they're going to move at the speed of the slowest party member. So they will always stick together. Which is going to be great. Now let's check the map. Where are we? We are in the hub. Belongs to the Holy Nation Outlaws. You can see the number of population. It will spawn roaming squads. You can see the resident types. You know, there's going to be drifters, hounds, vagrants. Nice people, really. But there's not much going on in the hub. Not much. Now, the map might look a bit empty. But that's just because we haven't discovered any other place. As we travel around and we get to stores, we can buy maps. We can, you know, get word of mouth. And that'll tell us, like, oh, there's a town to the northwest or something. You know. We'll find our way around. There are a lot of cities here. There's lots of different terrains as well. For example, this is a big desert. You know, obviously look at that. We've got a little fertile valley over here. Some water as well. There are actually some islands over here as well. We could potentially go and visit those in the far future. Might travel up here or in the fog. Uh, there's a swamp directly to our south. I know all that from having played a bit more. And then we've got a region over here that's been recently added. Just around release. We'll probably have to go and look at that. But we do know of the existence of a town called Squin. It's over to the, uh, the southwest over here. Might have to go and visit that one day. But for now, let's have a look around the hub. Why is it abandoned? Why is it broken? Why is there so much junk all over the place? Shinobi citizens, they're hungry. 
It'll tell you the status over here. So they are hungry. Their hunger is below 200. They'll get a stat penalty because of it. Not very good. They do have some beds though. So they have that over us at least. Let's see. We are free to do whatever we want. I think the first thing we'll do... There's an iron resource over there. Now this is something you'll do a lot. You'll find a lot in your first hours of Kenshi. We're going to run over there. And our goal will be to operate that quote-unquote machine. This is basically a resource node. And we can operate it. And we will slowly generate iron. There's 100% iron in this. So we won't lose any efficiency. And we can work it with three people maximum. Currently, we've only got two people assigned out of three, so we're going to be working at 80% efficiency. But me and Hobbs over here, we're going to we're going to bond over hard, honest labor. Let's let's have a quick look at his gear while we're here. Oh, it's a bunch of. Hang on, let's not have a look at his gear. There's a bunch of herbivores around here. There's Garu. Now, they're herbivores, so they're not going to harm anyone. But it's going to be useful to keep an eye out to see if there's any bandits. As you know, the population of the hub doesn't seem to be uh, a class act. Let's just put it that way. And I don't think, yeah, Hulk doesn't have a weapon. And I am utterly horrible at using my iron club, which is terrible. I don't have any armor to speak. Hob over here, however, he's got himself a long coat. It's got some skill bonuses attached to it. For example, it's going to make him better at dodging and attack damage. It's also got an innate martial arts bonus. It's also got a bit of blunt damage resistance and cut resistance. And then over here, he's got some sneaky chain pants. Plate of long boots and a straw hat, which gives him a perception bonus. So that's good. I'm going to go ahead, and we've already gathered one bit of iron. Average price around the hub is going to be 110%, which is not bad. We can sell it for like 100 cats a pop. Cats is like your money. That's not bad, but it's not great. I'm going to fast forward time a bit. We're going to mine some stuff. And I'll see you if something interesting happens, or I've basically filled our inventories up. Nighttime slowly falling. But, in the meantime, we've got a bit of a problem over there. That over there is a bunch of bandits. They haven't seen us, and I don't think they will. We've got a shadow being cast now. The sun's going down. The moon's going to be up pretty soon. But we should be safe. What we've got here is a pack of hungry bandits. They will mug you for your food. They're not great skill-wise. But, you know, with values of like 6? On this guy, for example. He's a lot better than I am with my attack of 1. I am utterly rubbish. And they also have numbers. I've got to find a leader around here somewhere. Usually... Turning around one of them. I think you might be the leader, yeah. Interesting. But, their strength lies in numbers. Not in skill. And, like, a person of skill 5 isn't necessarily 5 times as good as a person with skill 1. A person with skill 10 might not be, like, twice as good as a person of skill 5. It's It stacks. It, it's a lot worse than that. So, preferably, we'd need to stay out of sight, stay out of mind. We don't have any food. Not that that would, like, make any sort of difference to them. If they see us, they're going to be spoiling for a fight anyway. We should be able to steer clear of them and stay out of trouble. And keep our heads on our shoulders for another night. In the meanwhile, I've been mining... We've got like four chunks of iron in my inventory. I briefly ran over here because this is a copper resource, but it's only got 80% quality, 80% efficiency. So we're not going to be as fast when we work over there.
And copper doesn't weigh as much, but it is more valuable here. Even with an average price markup of 74%, so it's not going to be worth a lot here. Copper would be something you buy here to sell elsewhere for a profit. All you'd have to do is get food and walk it over there. Now we've stopped mining, that means our machine's full. Iron, it's going to sell for 99. Average markup of 110%, which is respectable. It's in red, so that means you'd rather sell than buy here. And that's what we'll be basing our decisions on. It weighs 9 kilos, however, per tiny little unit of iron. And that's why I went with iron over coal in the end. Our total weight is 85 out of 16. We are heavy. We're going to be walking very slowly. That's going to have an impact on our movement speed, of course. But it's also going to have an effect on something else. Our strength. The way to train strength is to carry people or overload your inventory or use a heavier weapon in combat. Now obviously we don't have a heavy weapon, we have a tiny katana. Our strength XP rate while walking at our current level of, of over encumbrance or encumbrance. I guess it's technically encumbrance since it's over what we can normally carry. Anyway. Currently, we would get 25% strength experience just by walking around. It's going to take forever to get back up to the hub. But when we do, our strength is going to go up quite drastically. Now, if we were to walk around without any encumbrance, you know, if we have our full movement range, we would train our athletics a lot more. Athletics determines how fast you can run. It's pretty simple. You train it by having a light inventory and running very fast. That's going to make up your max speed, but I like training strength initially. Because it means we can carry more while running at that speed. Basically. They're both good skills to have. A light person, not a lot of armor, they might be able to outrun people. Or as a strong person can either bring home the loot or wear armor without, you know, being a massive drag on a patrol, on a march. If you're traveling somewhere, you want to be able to carry everything with you. That's why I value strength. Especially when we're, we don't have a home. You know, what's the hub gonna offer us? They're all destroyed buildings. We could buy them. If we get enough cats, we could buy a building in town. Buildings are for sale. The panel here will tell you, oh, it's for sale. This building will cost you 7,200 cats, but it's destroyed. We can't do anything with it right now. We'd have to buy building materials to fix it up. We don't have the money for that. And I don't want to look to settle down just yet. We need to explore the world a bit. We need to live. We need to adventure. We need to fight. But first, I'm afraid we'll have to mine for now. Hobbs, can you... Thank you. Just grab that for me. Now, while we've been mining here, our laboring skill's going up. Which means we'll work faster. We'll get better at mining, you know. We get better at swinging the pickaxe. It doesn't really train our strength or anything else, but... We get better at doing menial tasks using general machinery and that will come in useful very it will come in very useful later basically you can see we're, we're leveling it pretty quickly unfortunately because it's currently nighttime and it's dark outside we get a penalty because we're working in darkness we can't see what we're doing very well which makes perfect sense so yeah the Garu are still patrolling this isn't Earth, by the way. This is very much not Earth. You might have gathered already with the strange creatures. There's plenty more where that came from. There's Leviathans, which are basically walking tiny mountains. I say tiny. <laughs> They're far from tiny. That's where Leviathan comes from. There's giraffe-like 
beak things which will eat you up like it's nothing. There are gorillas I've seen. Spiders in the swamp. There's even robots. That are... Not always as happy to see you, honestly. And then there's a beautiful night sky reminding you. This is very much not Earth. We'll, we'll see if we can find a nice beauty shot of... Yeah, there's a, there's a planet over there, but... It's not very beautiful tonight. We'll have to take another look at it at some point. But anyway, we're gonna go finish up on a mining area. We've still got space for like six ore in the hops' inventory. And one in my own. So we're gonna get back to work and we'll see you in a bit. And so, now that we've mined our share, we've basically spent an entire day mining. It's time for me and Hobbs. We now have a bit of a budding friendship. To head over to the hub and sell our goods. We are walking very slowly. We're also staying in formation, which is helpful. We also happen to be roughly exactly the same amount of over encumbrance. Inventory's full of ore, honest work, hard work. We've trained some laboring, you know, we're pretty good at it now, if I dare say so myself. But then again, I would say that, wouldn't I? I'm gonna go head over to this bar and see if we can maybe get ourselves some food. Our encumbrance means we'll get a lot more... You know, we'll need to eat a lot more, we're doing hard work here. We're carrying... A hundred kilos of iron with us, almost. That's a lot. Our strength is going up slowly, which is good. It's not gonna... It's not gonna be a fast thing. If you want good stats, you'll have to work for them in Kenshi. Or hire someone really good. Hobbs might not be that person yet, but... Given time, given some work, I'm sure we'll make something out of us. Let's go to the bar. I'm sure they'll buy our iron, why not? It's an honest trade good. Show me your wares, sir. There we go, we were at a thousand cats to begin with. We are now... Up to a grand total of... 2881! So we made 1800 from just mining outside of town. We could buy some food here. Gohan's pretty good. It's pretty tiny. Has 75 nutritional value, so it heal it basically gives you 75 hunger points. Sells for 500, which is expensive. We spent like nearly a hundred hunger. And we'd have to spend like a third of our money on food to get that back. I think I'm gonna get it though, I'm gonna get it some Gohan. You won't actually need to eat until you get to, like, 200 hunger. Or something like that, I think. They can also just eat portions of it, so they don't have to eat the entire thing at once. Can also buy some dried meat over here. Only 15 nutritional value. Only co goes for 100. So, roughly a fifth of the, uh, of the price. Fifth of the, uh, the food in there. But it's going to be a lot more spacey food. I think we'll leave it be for now. We've got a bit of food. We don't need a lot of food. I'm going to hang on to the copper, I think. Because, you know. If we find a town that has like 25% more for it. That's going to be... A good 30, 35 cats. We do have to make a living somehow. These people are slave mongers. They will on occasion take you... Or, you know, one of your people prisoner. And basically sell them as slaves. You can do that in this game. There's slavery. There's cannibalism, there's slavery. You can imprison people, you can build cages for them. So beware of the slave mongers. They're not friendly. A lot of the factions in Kenshi aren't. Now let's have a look around. Hey, you. You are a pacifier, okay. So, when we talked to him, he said, if you ever need help smoothing things over with the hounds, you know where to find me. If we take a look at the map here, then go to factions. We've only discovered a few factions so far. The Dust Bandits, the Holy Nation Outlaws, 
the hounds, slave traders, starving bandits and trade ninjas. Only the starving bandits and the dust bandits currently dislike us. If the hounds were to dislike us, we could talk to this pacifier and we could see about sorting that out. So that's good to know. We could talk to other people as well. We've got a bar thug over here. A twitchy bar thug over there. I don't like that look in your eye, eye scrubber. You smirking at me. I'm sorry, I meant no offense. And hurry up and get out of my face already. Ah, the towners. A drunk bar thug over there. And we have Kiji over here as well. Now we could hold down alt to see what sort of stuff there is over here. It's all... It's all red. It's not... It's not yellow. Or, like, greyish over here. The red colour means that this is owned by someone. And if we take this, we're stealing it. We could also look in these barrels. That would also, you know, if we take anything, that would be stealing. People are not going to appreciate you stealing. It's a valid way to play in Kenshi. And I don't think I will be indulging in it for mo most of my time here. Honestly, if you get a really high stealth character that's really good at pickpocketing and like knocking people out from stealth, that's really powerful. So I think we'll choose to be straight people for now. We might have come to this bandit town trying to find a way to survive, trying to f find friends like Hobbs. And we're doing well currently. We have a purse of money, we have food. I might not have a shirt currently. That's my one gripe, perhaps, but I don't think we need to resort to stealing. We can, however, have a talk with Kiji over here. Ah, <sighs> everyone underrates the cook. You know what? Without a good cook, you'll be shitting sideways for the rest of your days. Part of assortment training, scientist research, part of it, all is good food. How can you improve without the fuel to nourish the mind and body? So there you go. Hire me. You know what? You make a convincing argument. How much? 6,000 cats. What do you say? I can't afford that. So that's how you recruit new people into your uh, little faction, into your squad. We've got Gamson over here. Oi, heading out of town. You're looking to band up. Yeah, you want to join up? I would, but I need 3,000 cats before I can leave town. Will you help me out? Eh, I've changed my mind. So it turns out, we got a bit lucky with a friend Hobbs. He, uh, he wanted to go on an adventure with us, and that's great. Unfortunately, a lot, a lot of people here seem to have that idea. We're gonna trade between our people. We're gonna give the Gohan and the Copper to me, because I am a bit heavy. Or rather, Hobbs would be a bit heavy. And this way we can train our agility training, or, uh, yeah, our athletics while we're out on the road. And I think, uh, map does say there is a lone shack up here. You know what? We're to go north. I think we'll go and have ourselves a look at this here lone shack. Who are you running? You're a slave monk. Oh, you're capturing a slave, are you? What would that be, sir? I don't see where you're going. Your, your squad's probably pretty far. So, yeah. I guess I'll see you guys after my little road venture is done, or we meet someone interesting. I'll see you at the loan shack. Honestly, it wasn't a very far trek. It wasn't a very interesting trek either. The slave mongers are just running around, doing whatever, really. But, we find ourselves a lone shack here. It's got a bit of a small wind generator outside as well. There used to be a bar. If we look at the map, it actually updated to be a rebel base. Tread lightly. So we might be in the presence of some bad people here. Hello, barman. You have an interesting beard. I guess. More of a goatee, really. 
Rice ball. You've got a food cube. It's a bit more compact, but it's very expensive. So no. Do you like copper? No. You don't really care about copper. In fact, you've got your own copper. Fair enough. Yeah, see, there we go. We've got some books, but... Oh, weapons, I guess. All number refitted blade. Rusting blade, yeah. Our weapons, garbage. They do have bolts. 30 shots. Yeah, you're... You're regular bolts, so you don't... You don't actually have the ranged weapon that would use it. You do have heavy bolts here, though, for the, uh... The spring bat over here. And at the same time, that costs 3200 so we can't afford that. Can't afford the Nagi Nut. We could... We couldn't even afford the Wacky Zashi unless we saw, like, our bit of copper. And to be honest... It's got some cutting damage. Indoor bonus, plus four. Attack bonus, plus two. Defense bonus, minus two. Not a lot of armor penetration. Not a lot of damage against robots, but good against humans. And then we've got our old trusty club, which has a plus two bonus indoors. We are currently indoors, but... Eh. You've got stuff. That's cool. But you don't really have anything for me. Except for... Is that another... It's another slave monger. Just running around, doing whatever. Fair enough. Is there anything else we've seen so far? No. Oh, hello. That's... Dust bandits. Oh, there's a fight over there. We're gonna have a look. We're not gonna interfere, but we're gonna have a look. Was that sort of a crowd? There's gonna be people unconscious. There's already some blood in the sand over there. We might be able to find something of use over there. Poor old Rick over here still, you know, running around, bare-chested. And I think we can all agree, it'd be better if I put a shirt on or something, you know. Get some armor, while we're training our athletics. Hobbs, you're going to continue following me, just so I can casually keep ordering one person around. It's a lot easier that way. Game's currently loading some extra things in. There we go. We ate some Gohan. We also discovered Stack. Let's have a look. Stack's over here. You know, we're in the area. We'll have a we'll have a look over there. But first, this dust bandit's over here, slightly injured. You are doing a lot better. You're also a lot better at fighting. Yeah, no kidding. Wow, twenty-one attack with a minus four. So he's got a 25 normally, and a 23 defense, versus this guy, who's got a 17 attack normally, but he's only got a 13 currently. And he's got a 21 defense, plus 6 from his saber. There is a slave monger on the ground there, crippled, but he's still got both of his legs, even though, you know, this one's a tiny bit broken perhaps? Dust Bandit there on the ground. They are fighting, but I'm not sure they're going to lose, is the thing. Let's let's keep our distance. They are counted as hostile now. So we'll see their damage pop up in green. They have seen us, which is a, a bit worrying. But we might be able to poach some loot off these people anyway. If this guy over here... This slave monger, who's doing a lot better than the dust bandit against him. If he can knock him out cold, we might be able to take that fancy sword of his. With the plus six defense bonus. <laughs> We're going to need it, frankly. Ooh, that, that slave monger is taking a lot of damage, but every, la every hit she lands, or he lands, I think it's a he. Might be a she, hard to tell. They have armor, you know. It's a duel to the death. And the dust bandit lost. He is KO. His stomach is at health minus 21. 
His toughness means that he goes knockout when a body part goes below minus 20. You can go knockout before that, but once you go past that point, you won't wake up for a good while. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loot him immediately. Don't give him the time to get his weapon. There we go. Take his saber. Take his helmet. His heart protector. His armored rag shirt, which is better than a rag loincloth. You know, we'll, we'll let him have pants. I want to see his boots. Now I'm basically a dust bandit. In all but name. I'm going to be a lot heavier now. Because I'm not used to carrying a horse chopper, which is a saber. Plus four defense bonus, minus four attack bonus, I'll take it. Uh, we lose perception from our helmet. Obviously, it's going to be harder to see. We get a defense bonus from our heart protector. And covers 50% of our chest. Not great, but it's good armor. And it's better than nothing. It's also worth a lot. We get a martial arts bonus from our armored rag shirt. And our samurai boots... Slow us down a fair bit. Also make it very hard to sneak around. But yeah, we have a weapon now. Uh, we're gonna... Give that to Hobbs. Now we're both armed and dangerous. This guy should stay on the ground, hopefully. Nope, he got back up, but that's fine. He doesn't have a weapon now. He's gonna be forced to fight with martial arts. Basically unarmed. And I think we're gonna... No, he, he fell back down. Okay. In that case, we're going to keep our distance. Let them fight it out. The more stuff we can steal, the better. But I'm not going to count on it. He's making a run for it. Let's see if we can get a couple hits on him. Let's get a little bit of practice on this unarmed guy. He is dodging our attacks, which is, you know. Oh, there we go. Hobbs landed a hit on him. That's going to be good for his saber skill, and, you know, us getting better at fighting in the big world out here. Oh, there we go, we landed another good hit on him. Oh, we're being engaged currently. Time for us to run away. Oh, we are not doing well. We are not doing well at all, he's going to catch up to us. Ow, that hurt. Yeah, we are now injured. There's a lot of bandits running after us. Hobbs, uh, could you please do me a favor and just run as fast as you can? Is there anything we could drop? That saber weighs six kilos. It's pretty heavy. I think I'm going to take off our boots because they have a minus to athletics effect. Our current run speed is 11 miles per hour. If we put them on, Another 13% goes off of that. I'm going to drop the saber. We can always pick it up later, right? And this means that we'll be able to run at 16 miles per hour, which is a lot faster. We'll drop my boots. I'll also drop the rag skirt as well. We'll have our undies. And now we can basically pelt it at full speed. There we go. It's a lot better. This is why I wanted to retrain strength, ideally. But hey, uh, we do have a ranger chasing us. He just shot his friend in the back. There we go. That looks like it hurts. He's got three arrows in him. The poor guy. Yeah, we need to run. We need to run away immediately. That's how it goes in Kenji. You try to vulture, you vulture too much. The slave mongers are falling one by one. But maybe, maybe we'll be able to get away. Maybe they'll give up. Maybe they'll see how futile this is. Maybe this guy will bleed out from his injured stomach. It is getting worse, as indicated by this little uh, icon over here. Oh, we just stop running. You never stop running. Keep running. As far as the eye can see. Uh, we're going down this path. I don't want to turn around at this point. <laughs> We have to run. Yeah, the ranger nearly got a shot off there. It could have been dangerous. He's got an accuracy of... Well, we can't really see currently because he's not attacking. But he's he's gone off. He's going to attack the other people. That's fine. Rather them than me. It's a harsh world after all. 
I'd rather survive it for a day longer. Yeah. They're getting far away from their friends now. Which is good for us. But we can take this guy two on one, I don't think. Well, maybe. It seems like he's had enough. Yeah, it seems like they've had enough. We get to live. Fortunately, we don't have a med kit. And Hobbs is injured. It's slowly getting worse. That's not a problem immediately, but something to keep in mind. We'll give him the Gohan, because he's getting a bit hungry. We'll eat when we get below 250 hunger, so that's good. We'll keep that in mind. Now we're going to tell him to sneak. You're under attack, you're injured. Sneaking! Talking to sneak when you're entering stealth mode. You can perform stealth knockouts, kidnap and steal stuff. Unfortunately, if we're injured, we'll get a penalty to... Uh, well, it depends. Certain injuries will give you a minus to things. Certain equipment will give you a minus to things as well. These boots! Terrible for sneaking. Take them off. It's that simple. Unfortunately. Sneaky chain! That's gonna rustle around. It's gonna make you worse at sneaking. I think... Did you just get found out? I hope you didn't get found out. That would be really bad. Right, let's make our way back slowly. They won't pick up our f our dropped items, I think. It's a bit exploity, but at the same time, we had to run for our lives. I'd rather drop the stuff and risk getting it back later than committing and dying. Because, well, there's two of us, a lot more of them, you know. Mathematics is not in our favor. Look at that, though. Ooh. Look at that. Slave monger. They are healing. Chest minus 42. It's getting worse quickly. Leg minus 49. It's getting worse quickly. Now, because they're bandaging, that will stop it. That will make it better. But it's going to take time. Time for them to heal up. And anything can happen. They might find new people to fight. Alright, our stuff is still there. Injured are trickling in. Looks like they might have won. Ultimately. Dust Bandit Bowman. Your accuracy error is 10.6 degrees. That's very inaccurate. Alright, someone's seen us. The thing is red. It's pointing over there. Yeah, so they have seen us. That's fine. I don't really care. We're going to train up our stealth anyway. Oh, there's more slave mongers coming in from over there. Okay, screw the stealth. We're going to run now. I don't trust these slave mongers very much at all. We're going to pick up our stolen stuff over here. It's stolen from bandits, so nobody's going to really care. We're going to try to be quick. They're obviously injured. They're not in the best state for a fight right now. But they are... Well, they're taking slaves right now, so... Oh, you are a slave monger. In that case, never mind. I'm not going to steal from these people. They'll give us a hard time. And by hard time, I mean they'll try to kill us. I'll take your stuff, thank you. I have stolen goods in my inventory. Yes! You are correct. That's another dust band. Do you have any? Ooh. You've got a standard quality junk bow. It's not worth a lot because it's a crappy weapon, but I'll take the uh, stuff. I'll take the heart protector because that's worth a lot. We'll get you some new... we get some more pants to wear. Why not? we take the helmet. It's only worth 93. We'll leave the helmet. I'd rather see if I can get anything else useful here. You're playing dead. Hungry Bandit, Dust Bandit. So they're playing dead. That's something you can do. You can sneak around and try to heal people that way. Or you can get up when everyone's gone and hopefully get out alive. If we check his inventory, however, 
and try to steal something, I'm pretty sure he's going to wake up and be like, Hey, why are you stealing? Yeah, see? Zero percent chance when we look at the, hel at the boots. However, if we compare them, they're worth 300 compared to 89. So we're going to try and like... Yeah, he's going to wake up now. That's going to piss him off, but we have the advantage here. He's on the ground. There we go. I think we just knocked him out immediately. His friend's going to get up. We need to get over there and kick him while he's down. There we go. It's a rough world out here. We have to do what needs to be done. Uh, I'll take that spiked helmet, thank you. Uh, are we, yeah, sure, I'll take the rags as well. So we're trading out stuff here for different qualities, and we'll have a look at them side by side here real quick. The blunt resistance goes up a fair amount, so does the cutting resistance, and the value. That's what we're going to be looking for. It goes um, prototype grade, shoddy grade, standard grade, high grade, specialist grade, and then I think there's like two more. But yeah, the higher the grade, the less penalties you have. For example, if you look at the athletics effect, we only have an 8% penalty on you. Versus an 11% penalty on you. More better, more good. And we've got better boots on you as well. Ooh. So this is a horse chopper as compared to another horse chopper. But again, more value. Simple. We'll keep the boots. Do we check out the helmet? It's only 93. Yeah, we'll do that. Uh, take you. I think we'll just chuck these boots as well. Because that way we can try and get another horse chopper. Which, honestly, they're probably going to sell for more than the boots. Not if we check out the good boots, however. <laughs> Never mind that plan. I don't think we can squeeze in another weapon here, but that's fine, honestly. We've cherry-picked some of the good loot here. There's some rubbish horse choppers here. We've got a decent saber, I guess. But, you know... If we happen to find more good stuff, I will definitely have a look at taking it. Like these boots. Another 300. Done. Easy. There we go. The loot frenzy that is Kenshi. I think I looted you already, but we're going to make sure. Yeah. Well, hello. There's the reinforcements. And that's why I'm eager to get out of here now. Anything good? No. The heart protector, if I could take it, I would. I probably can, actually, yeah. If I give you the horse chopper back, and then I take the heart protector, I'll have extra space for a helmet. Yoink. Now, our inventory space is limited. Real limited, unfortunately. But we can always get backpacks from a store. We'll have to find them. But it is a possibility. I'm going to quickly put you on the ground. Because I want to see what these boots are. Okay, he's just talking to the guy on the ground, I think. Yeah, they're, they're taking their slaves here currently. That's fine, I don't care about that. They're guarding their fallen. That's perfectly okay. Uh, that's a bone dog, belongs to slave traders as well, so... It's their dog. You can get dogs. They are good boys. More boots. More good boots! There's a lot of good boots out here today. And we can bring them, so yeah, we will. It's another 300 cats in the bag. Some more toothpick ammo as well. We could use this junk bow. It's a crappy bow. But, it's, you know, better than nothing. Now here's the question, do I keep the sneaky chain on me? It's got a minus stealth effect, which is not bad. Protection against cutting, it's not great. Efficiency, also not good, so I think I'm just going to sell those. We'll hang on to the armored rag skirt. Maybe. If I'm going to sell those, I might as well just change them out. Because the heart protector is going to pay more ultimately. It's a numbers game in that regard. 
But hey, we have survived our first battle. And live to tell the tale. We're gonna go. We're gonna meet back up at the hub. But I think that will be in the next episode. So, we walk off. Immediately having found ourselves a new kit. Having found ourselves slightly tougher after this first initial battle. We've got the planet in the background. The slavers talking to their new prey. They're gonna have to sleep it off because tomorrow they start their life in servitude. That's not our concern. Tonight. Tonight we feast. We celebrate our survival. I'd like to thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this first episode of Kenshi. I'm going to be playing this off and on. Probably not going to upload every day because I'm currently moving. I'm packing stuff like as I speak. So like in a week or so, week and a half, I'm going to be set up over there. And then content should hopefully resume a lot more, well, regularly. It's the thing. Until then, I don't know. Could be daily, could be not. It's an edited Let's Play, so that's going to take a lot more time. But leave a, leave a thumbs up and a comment if you enjoyed the series. Let me know. Because then, you know, I might be able to put some more effort in while moving. It's been good to get back to recording. It's been good to, back, it's been good to do something again. As we do our weird little waddle here. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Until next time. Have a good one, folks.